And welcome back to tonight's Progressive Roundtable. Still with me, Medea Benjamin, Stuart Acuff, and Neil Soroka. And joining us to give the conservative take on things is Horace Cooper, attorney and senior fellow at the National Center for Public Policy Research. Horace, always nice to have you with us. Thank you. Yes, sir. So of all the ridiculous lies told at Wednesday night's Republican debate, the biggest one was the one Jeb Bush told about his brother, former President George W. Bush. Check it out. Your brother and your brother's administration gave us Barack Obama because it was such a disaster those last three months that Abraham Lincoln couldn't have been elected. You know what? As it relates to my brother, there's one thing I know for sure. He kept us safe. Actually, George W. Bush didn't keep us safe. In addition to that whole 9-11 thing, more Americans died from terrorism under his watch than any other president since Reagan. And that doesn't even begin to count all the people who died in his two stupid and needless wars. So, Horace, under what possible definition of reality could anybody say George W. Bush kept us safe? If you simply say, let's look at Islamic-based terrorism, and if you do that, which is what George W. Bush said he was making his emphasis on, you will see the contrast between the number of attacks that we have had under the Obama administration versus those under George Bush. We had 9-11 and we had one more. It happened in uh, 2002 in Los Angeles. There was no underwear bomber. There was no... Uh, shoe there was the shoe bomber. There, there, that's the shoe bomber. Oh, that's the other one. Okay. So... So your, so your argument is that when George W. Bush ignored the presidential daily briefing on August 6th and told the guy, okay, you've covered your ass, go back to Washington, D.C., and, and when he ignored the warnings that were coming from Israel, from, from the U.K., from Russia, from Germany, that something was going to happen. Well, actually, I don't think he ignored them. I think he stayed, you know, he stayed for an additional four weeks in Texas after he got that presidential daily briefing. Still nothing had happened. Then he, then he went to Florida. And, and in fact, here's, you know, this is when Condoleezza Rice was asked about, you know, how did you keep us safe? Here's what she had to say. Isn't it a fact, Dr. Rice, that the August 6 PDB warned against possible attacks in this country? And I ask you whether you recall the title of that PDB. I believe the title was Bin Laden determined to attack inside the United States. Uh, uh, now, the, uh... Okay, so... Thank so, you. Horace, we're suffering the consequences of that invasion of Iraq to this day. Wouldn't you say that ISIL is a direct consequence of George Bush's invasion and that extremism has now spread throughout the Middle East to North Africa and it was George Bush's invasion that's responsible for a lot of that? I believe it was Vice President Biden who stood up and said that we have resolved this pacification has taken place and this problem has been solved. And it turns out it was exactly the decision to walk away that has allowed the ISIL problem and the metastasization in the region. You mean that's no, that's the not true at all. In fact, it's the very Ba'athists that were part of Saddam Hussein's military that George Bush dismissed 300,000 people that are now the generals who are leading ISIS. So they it, are. It, it goes so right back to George Bush. So the vice president should not have said, well, whatever, we're done. That, that's but, irrelevant. Whatever no, the vice president said. No, no, it's not said, irrelevant. It's what did George Bush do? When the water settles and new action occurs, new responsibility lies. Well, you can't declare victory and then happen. now say, wait a second, oh, it's not a victory. We it's never declare victory. Else. I don't think anyone declared I, victory. I, uh, I know one really guy stood up on a podium and declared victory on a boat. I, I, I'm having trouble buying this. We have two million refugees pouring north from the Middle East. We have the Middle East in chaos. We have a global uh, uh, depression that occurred on George uh, W. Bush's uh, term, in George W. Bush's term. And that has not made any of us any safer. And it's we made got, the world a much more dangerous place. And we have 5,000 dead U.S. soldiers, and we've got, what, 100,000 100, who are plus, wounded? Yeah. You know? Plus. All right. George so, W. Bush did all this, and, and his brother has the, the, the and temerity. And we paid trillions of dollars for it, and we're still suffering from that. So the President of the United States stood up and said, we're going to stop 
the threat of Islamic terrorism. And on his watch, we had one more instance on this present. That's because there was no threat of Islamic terrorism until George W. Bush created it. So it waited seven years. It waited seven years. It didn't and wait now seven we've years. Had a dozen attacks on on President Obama's watch. And you don't you count the U.S. soldiers that were killed for nothing? In that, that is not entering into your equation of are we safe? You don't think that every IED I that blew up an American soldier, soldier was a terrorist people, attack? I think the American people are looking and asking, why did one of our ambassadors get murdered by Islamic terrorists, the first since 1979? Why is it that only because some attending shopkeeper looks out in New York City on Times Square, where I slept last night at a hotel nearby, just happen to watch and see that something was wrong otherwise an attack would have actually occurred and ask the guy who was doing the attack who wanted to do it what were his motivations his motivations were that he had the given us invasion of iraq he is the killing of muslim and the occupation he understood that we were not going to respond with the the type of response that we He understood that, that George Bush went in and killed a lot of Arabs, a lot of Muslim people, and he was really so angry point, about it. To your point, you acknowledge under the last seven years, we are not safe. Correct. We're not safe. No, we are. No, yes. we are, I, I acknowledge that we're not safe. What we're saying is, and I am created those conditions. We are less are safe. George W. Bush's wars. So you guys are George that we're W. Not Bush's safe. failure to keep us safe in 9/11. We will be dealing for decades with what, what George Bush did. What I'm saying is, these were the conditions that he created. No, you're, okay. you're admitting that he, we're not safe, and we I'm saying Thanks we are to George less w. Bush's safe failures. now That's than we were after course. 2008. Okay, I, I, sorry. if I can segue from from this into a, another dimension of this, George W. Bush not only failed to keep safe the people who worked in the Twin Towers. He also failed to keep safe the people who rushed in to try to save their lives. Yes. While the EPA knew that the first responders were being poisoned with asbestos, over 400 tons of it, heavy metals, cancer-causing chemicals, Bush's EPA secretary, Christine Todd Whitman, went on TV to tell everybody, nothing to worry about. We've had concern we're going to continue to monitor, but right now, as I will tell you, everything we're getting back from the sampling that we're doing is below background levels. There is not a reason for the general public to be concerned. But there was a lot to worry about, and even more people have died from trying to help out than who died in the initial explosions when the planes the Bush failed to prevent hit the towers. And the Republican response to those first responders who got sick from volunteering to help out? Screw them! Republicans so strongly fought any sort of government-funded health care for the first responders that the only way Democrats could get funding for them passed was by doing it through reconciliation, which blocked the Republican filibuster attempt but can only last for five years. Former Daily Show host John Stewart was in Washington, D.C. this week to lobby for a permanent renewal of the James Zagroda 9-11 uh, Health and Compensation Act, which is set to expire next month and which provides health benefits for 9-11 first responders. Speaking at the Capitol, Stewart spoke bluntly about the challenges of getting Congress to agree to what should be a no-brainer piece of legislation. The real test appears to be whether or not we can carry this momentum from these meetings to actual uh, legislation. There hasn't been one meeting where we've sat there, they look you directly in the eye, and they say, oh my gosh, absolutely, these men and women are heroes, and then you walk out of the room and it's forgotten. And the real key is going to be, how do we take the momentum of uh, these great, brave individuals and these great legislators today, how do we turn that into actual uh, action with urgency? So uh, that is my job. I'm not on television anymore, but I sure as hell know a lot of people that are. And uh, at a certain point, there are a lot of congressional doors that are closed because those individuals do not want to be shamed publicly. Well, guess what? If, if you don't uh, uh, sign on to this type of thing, it, it has to be known. And right now, Lindsey Graham, George Pataki, Marco Rubio, Rand Paul, and Ted Cruz have yet to say whether they will support renewal. What the hell is wrong with the Republican Party? Interestingly, the chairman of the authorizing committee, Fred Upton, actually says it's going to be a priority and it's something that they're going to move. So the idea that those individuals haven't said anything is the test. I want to ask similarly, when the EPA poisoned the river in Colorado and that we're going to see decades from now deaths and injuries, 
Has Hillary announced that she's going to make a priority of moving a bill? Absolutely no one's asking her that question. A, it was, an, it was a private contractor that did that. B, it was uh -oh. toxic waste EPA left over said from, they a were private, sorry. From, from, from a private mining operation EPA that had said taken they the money were and sorry. run. And, and C, you're changing the subject. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm showing hypocrisy. <laughs> the point of the matter is the authorizing committee chairman and the subcommittee chairman have both said this bill is going to move I, in the House of Representatives. Back to 9-11, 373 firefighters lost their lives that day going into those buildings. They were crushed as they ran up the stairs to try to rescue people who were trapped. 373 lost their lives. Uh, and now their brothers and sisters, police officers, firefighters, EMTs, bus drivers who were first responders as well, are, are being hurt and killed by the results of that, still being hurt and killed by the results of that. It is, it is ridiculous yeah. that somebody running for president of the United States will not stand up for the people who gave their life and risked their lives on 9-11. You, you can't, guys you can't asked, preach. Yes, I you certainly can't can. Preach. I can absolutely. You guys haven't asked for one person to be fired for what happened in Colorado, even though the EPA uh, admitted, uh, uh, EPA admitted they have poisoned that water and that there are going to be injuries and suffering that will follow. Forrest, you haven't asked for I, even I a understand firing. that it is uncomfortable to but talk the about truth the fact is, that Republicans this program don't is want to still, support 9-11. The truth uh, first is, they want to talk about this that, 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 the program is in a, in place right now. And, the program it, is not operational. Permanent. It's not permanent. No, it then isn't. If, 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 no, it isn't permanent. If Republicans want to ensure that remembering 9-11 isn't a slogan, but is actually something they believe, then they should come out now for this legislation to make sure that this is permanent. You think There's no be, reason be, why they should stand in the way. Why? Why? No, I was going to say, you think they'd be tripping over each other to double and triple the care given. I mean, they're constantly talking, remember 9-11, remember 9-11, remember 9-11. Well, yeah, let's remember 9-11 and let's pay honor to the people who are there to and you pay help honor out. to the people by ensuring that people who need help get assistance That's not right. by guaranteeing that bureaucrats have a <laughs> permanent <laughs> lifetime jobs and appointments oh. that's so now the problem we get to the Republican and that's argument. the discussion oh my god yeah. government is so you reauthorize the health care you reauthorize well the firefighters program. are bureaucrats too they're government employees right you to reauthorize that, right? the program they're not paid by the federal government and you reauthorize the program so that there is accountability. You make sure. There is no just, accountability right now. Just, no, we have, we have there, to, there we was have accountability. To, we, have to, we have to wrap it up. Horace, thank you very thank much. You, thank you, sir. Thank you. More of tonight's Progressive Roundtable.